Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before we get started with our special guest today, I want to remind everybody out there in ATP land, if you're not on our text message alert subscriber list, please take out your cell phone right now and text the word truth in the message box, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be signed up. You'll get this show and all of our content absolutely for free in the palm of your hand. Let me bring on Laura Loomer. She is an investigative journalist. Uh, she's quite well known throughout social media and politics and her commentary, and she's a pro congressional candidate in Florida. Welcome back, Laura. Thanks for having me again. Absolutely. Such a pleasure. So let's talk about what the heck is going on in Europe right now. Anti-Semitism is exploding in every single country since the conflict between Hamas and Israel started by, continued by, in an audacious manner by the terrorists uh, belonging to the Hamas and Islamic Jihad organizations in Gaza. Israel had the audacity to shoot down the rockets, at least a lot of them, and retaliate by taking out the leadership of Hamas and their rocket launcher locations. And check this out. A journalist who wrote about uh, Israel sprayed, I guess, free Gaza and Palestine on the walls of the former Warsaw Ghetto, which is a World Heritage commemoration of the slaughter of the Polish Jews by the Nazis in World War II. And if that wasn't bad enough, she is now teaching members of the British Teachers Union because she's an expert in anti-Semitism. Yep, the anti-Semite is teaching anti-Semitism. How is this possibly okay? And there's not a standing line of 10,000 people condemning it. Yeah, well, look, the same, the same thing is happening here in the United States. This is the progressive agenda. And unfortunately, the progressive radical leftists have decided on a, on a worldwide level, because the progressive movement isn't just here in the United States. Of course, this is a movement that is now infecting the entire world, where you have these radical leftist movements that have decided to partner with groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter that have anti-Zionist, anti-Israel um, agenda items at the core of their mission statement. And that's exactly what they're, they're trying to do. They're trying to distort reality. Uh, they're also trying to uh, co-opt the word uh, anti-Semitism by saying that, you know, Arabs are Semites. This is why I personally refer to anti-Semitism as Jew hatred when I'm talking about attacks on uh, on Jews or hate crimes against Jews, uh, because you know our own Linda Sarsour here in the United States uh, a few years ago in New York City, I recall she was invited uh, to a college in New York City where she was actually one of the lecture speakers on anti-Semitism. It was a panel about anti-Semitism in which one of the biggest and most vile Jew haters. Uh, in the entire world is supposedly an authority. So we're, we're, we're fighting the same battle here, uh, but they're really just trying to co-opt the term anti-Semitism and make it all about Palestinians and all about Muslims while ignoring what it really is, is Jew hatred. Well, listen to this. There, Sky News Network, which is worldwide, has a reporter named Mark Stone, and he just issued an apology because he tweeted out to a Jewish person who had mentioned anti-Semitism to him that, quote, the Jew hatred you experience is actually the consequence of the current Israeli government's policies. Meaning there wasn't anti-Semitism till there was Bibi Netanyahu and the conflict between Israel and Hamas, which is insane. And this guy, Laura, still works at Sky News. Why is the press so biased and why isn't there any self-correction within the press community? Well, it really is, uh, you know, quite an interesting phenomenon, right? Because when you look at the press and you look at the media, right, you have people constantly talking about the Jewish owned media. Well, when you look at the breakdown of the media here in the United States, a lot of the executives and the owners of our media institutions are Jews. So you would expect them to be pro-Israel and to be speaking out aggressively against the Jew haters within their ranks. But just as we saw when we were discussing uh, two weeks ago, CNN had a guy on payroll 
who said the world needs another Hitler, right? And Jeff Zucker, the head of CNN, is Jewish, but yet nothing is done about this. So uh, the problem is, is it's the wrong type of Jews who are overseeing the media complex. They're not Zionists. They're not pro-Israel. They're not proud Jews. These are what you call self-hating, self loathing Jews who are doing the bidding of their enemies. Essentially, they're walking themselves to the gas chamber by, by, by entertaining and pedestaling uh, Jew hatred uh, and, and then paying for it by keeping these Jew haters on their payroll. Well, let's talk about one of the most infamous on our side of the pond. You and I were actually messaging about this a couple days ago, where you've got Ilhan Omar, the leader of the I hate Israel and anyone Jewish um, congressional uh, delegation has come out with an insane quote where she's comparing Israel and the United States, the Hamas and the Taliban as if they're all the same victims and perpetrators and has not walked back the comment at all. What in the world do you make of her thought that the United States and Israel and Hamas are all the same, and so is the Taliban. Is this as crazy to you? Well, as it, it is you know, me? it's crazy, but just as I said years ago when I was exposing Ilhan Omar prior to her even becoming a member of Congress, I warned people that this woman who was running for Congress was a full-blown jihadist. Uh, you know, I actually uh, caught her having a fundraiser for Hamas during her uh, campaign season. Uh, I had exposed the fact that she was sympathetic to ISIS. She was sympathetic to the Taliban. There are actually interviews from years ago that were dug up and these were published years ago of Ilhan Omar laughing about Hezbollah and Al Qaeda and the Taliban and smiling when talking about the 9-11 terrorist attacks that killed nearly 3000 Americans, okay? Um, I also find her comments to be a little uh, strange given the fact that Ilhan Omar is actually pro Hamas. She was just last week uh, spewing tons of propaganda for Hamas. So I don't know if this is her way of, you know, calling Americans terrorists while also pretending like she thinks Hamas and the Taliban are terrorist organizations because I know. I have video of myself confronting Ilhan Omar asking her to condemn Hamas and she refused to do so. So she definitely is pro Hamas. She's definitely pro Taliban. We've seen the video of her laughing about the 9-11 terrorist attacks, uh, but we already know that she thinks Israel is a terrorist state. I mean, she has, she has, has been spewing blood libel against Jews and Christians and America for years now. She has no loyalty to America as a United States Congresswoman. Her only loyalty is to Islam, to Sharia law, which she fully embraces. So here's something that ought to be easy, like falling out of your chair and hitting the floor easy, Laura, that the Democratic members of the caucus that aren't part of the squad, who have been strong backers of the US-Israel relationship militarily, economically, socially, and our common religions, not to mention the fact that they're the first line of defense against worldwide terror, by that I mean Israel, they ought to be able to get together and very simply say, you are not representing the views of the Democrat party and we're gonna build a wall around you, even though she says these horrible things and they can't come out with a simple statement, Laura Loomer, that says, Ilhan Omar, stop it. What you're saying is anti-Semitic. They can't yeah. even agree on a condemnation letter. Look, we were talking about this uh, last time I was on your show about how support for Israel used to be a bipartisan issue. It wasn't even a debate between the Democrat and the Republican Party. It was one of those issues that they found common ground on. But now, just as President Trump has famously said, the Democrat Party is now the party of Jew haters and Israel haters. And this isn't anything new. If you recall, one of the very first things Ilhan Omar did when she became a member of Congress and was sworn in uh, is... Uh, you know, she she said that um, that Jews were all about the Benjamins, right? And uh, she tried to say that uh, America was bought and paid for uh, by Israel. And she was, uh, you know, constantly. She has a documented history of attacking Jews um, online and and uh, 
you know, entertaining Holocaust deniers, inviting Holocaust deniers uh, to participate with her in Congress with Rashida Tlaib. Um, and the Democrats, when they passed their anti-Semitism resolution, they still wouldn't um, condemn Ilhan Omar. Nancy Pelosi still wouldn't use Ilhan Omar's name. In fact, she decided that doing so would increase Islamophobia. And so what did she do? Well, they took a delegation trip to Africa, and then she decided to pose in a photo where she was holding Ilhan Omar's hand. So Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, you know, she has no problem holding hands with a blatant Jew hater. Of course, the Democrat Party isn't going to openly condemn Ilhan Omar because in this day and age, the squad is now running the Democrat Party. And as we all know, speaking truth about Islam or criticizing Jew hatred that comes out of the mouth of Muslim people is Islamophobia, right? And that's a bannable fence on social media. I was banned and deplatformed everywhere for calling Ilhan Omar anti-Jewish. And if you are a member of Congress and you dare call out Ilhan Omar for being a Jew hater and a terror sympathizer, well, you just... You know, you're just such an anti-Muslim bigot. You're such a big old Islamophobe. Very well said, Laura. And I couldn't agree with you more. Tell people how they can get in touch with you or learn what you're doing in your various endeavors, would you please? Yeah, so uh, my website is loomerd.com, loomerd.com. Uh, you can subscribe to my website to get my email updates. I'm banned on all social media, so uh, you won't be finding me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any of those things, but I am on Gab at Laura Loomer. I'm on Telegram at Loomerd Official, and I'm going to be doing weekly reports with ATP, so you'll be able to follow me here by subscribing, and you'll be able to get my content by subscribing to uh, ATP's uh, uh, text updates where you'll be uh, able to see all of my video reports on a weekly basis. And then if you're interested in supporting my congressional campaign, you can go to Laura Loomer for congress.com. I'm running in Florida's 21st district, which is the most Jewish district in the entire country. Quite a summary. And I appreciate the plug for ATP. And it's a perfect segue for me to say, please sign up. If you haven't, just text the word truth and send it to 88. 202. For Laura, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.